This is the first time I've ever told this story, actually. Um, but um, when I was serving on the Puma Force back in 2008, we were supporting Special Forces missions in Baghdad and Balad. And um, the pilot said to me, uh, well, unfortunately, Sarah, you can't fly these missions because you're a girl. As if that, that, that sort of answered the problem. I was like, OK, explain. And they said, um, well, it's not set up. You know, there's no female showers, so you'd have to share the shower block with these muscled, good-looking, talented men. <laughs> and I was like, I can handle that, I think, yeah. But any, anything else? And they went, yes, actually, there is something else. Um, if you go down on the way to the target, the Special Forces guys, they call them the Blades, um, they will, their, their mission will be compromised because they'll have to defend you. They won't be able to help themselves. They'll have to defend you because you're a poor, defenceless woman. Um, they didn't say it quite like that. But I was like, hmm, I don't like that. Um, so I said, can we just press the test on that? Can we go ask them? Um, so they did. They went and asked uh, the Special Forces guys. They said, what would happen if the helicopter went down on the way to the target? And there was a woman on board. And apparently they said, um, if we go down, you won't see us. We'll be running faster than any of you can run towards the target. Because the people that we were going after, um, you know, they were at the top of Al-Qaeda. They're people that are planning international terrorist attacks. They're using children and women as human shields. You know, these are people that we really want to get hold of and apprehend. And they've been monitoring these people for months, maybe years. And they've got this tiny window to go and apprehend this person. And our job is to get them from A to B. So they need to be able to stay focused on their top priority, which is apprehending the Queen's enemies. And they trust us to look after ourselves so they can do that. And you know, we've been trained to do that. We've been trained to evade. We've been trained to go into all-round defense. Uh, we've been trained to resist interrogation if we get caught. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm a pilot, not a soldier. It would have terrified me. But the point is, is that they weren't going to switch their focus at that point. They were going to stay focused on their top priority. And they trusted that we could look after ourselves. And I remember um, I, I was very amused at seeing how uncomfortable this made some of the pilots. They were like, what? You're not going to be my personal bodyguard? <laughs> Who's going to look after me? Well, I eat my swan sandwiches. This is terrible. Um, but actually, I was really proud. I thought, yeah, you, you know, I can look after myself, maybe. So it was a harsh lesson, but I think sometimes we need to learn it um, in that, you know, when other people come to us and ask us for help, maybe it's okay to say, do you know what? I do want to help you, but I need to focus on this. Can I come back to you later? So, you know, not urgent, but important. Let people work stuff out for themselves from time to time. Because people are tougher and more competent than they often give themselves credit for. 